Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Critical levels, we've seen a few days down on Bitcoin and the alts. Where is our next support level and what do we need to do to break through and get to our green light of full bull market territory? That's what we're looking at in today's video. So without further ado, make sure you've hit the like button so that YouTube knows you want to see more of this content. Subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you're updated and you're following the crypto journey. All my social links are down below so you can follow the journey there as well. Plus Australia's best cryptocurrency exchange, SwiftX. Go and check those out as well and get yourself an account set up before the next bull market starts. All right. Yesterday we had Cardano and some buy zones were hit on our BTC pairing. We've been waiting for some lows on altcoins against their BTC pair because we have already been buying Bitcoin as we'll see in just a moment. These are the charts that we look at, the numbers. We want to see green for altcoins in this row here and in the seven days. So we've seen it climb for the likes of, well, XRP, Polkadot, we got Chainlink climbing up. It had been hit quite hard over the last six to 12 months against BTC. Uniswap's up. Solana is well and truly up. And then the big ones are Terra Luna doing very, very well. I am going to talk briefly about Theta as well in the video. So make sure you stick around for that because we are looking at some good levels over there. Our fear and greed, 42 Back to fearful, obviously with a few days down, that's to be expected, but I still don't have a buy signal on our fear and greed chart. If you are looking for this website, alternative.me, crypto, fear and greed index, search it on Google, very, very easy to find. Our fear and greed plan, current levels about 13% up and the Bitcoin value or the price of Bitcoin at the moment is 38,300. Our average price is around 34K. So once we get some more signals, sweet, we can start, uh, we can continue adding to this plan. But for now, that's where we sit. Our total market cap is at 1.54 trillion. So the critical level at the moment for us to continue seeing this short term move to the upside, 1.4 on the total market caps. And then we want to obviously break out of these levels at around 1.7 trillion. Next major level from that, 1.85. A lot to do up, down or sideways. I hear the jokes all the time, but at least if you're prepared for what can come next, it's not going to come as a surprise. So the support is what we're waiting for and we'll see that on the other charts as well. Bitcoin, similar looking chart, its support level, we've been talking about 36K forever. We broke through it just a week and a half ago and that happened on big volume and the market had to do it there. Remember, we always talk about breakthroughs on big volume. That's what we got. Now we're just waiting. What do we do here? We're waiting to see, does it hit 36 or 37, form some sort of support and then go again. Maybe we get a little support and a move up, a retest and it fails. The idea is that we want it to break through 42 cleanly with some volume. The green light, the big green light, the big green light for another sustained bull market. Personally, I'm looking at 47K for now. The major low is in and the all-time high is in. So the 50% on that is around 47K. Plus there was a level that we found support on once we dropped in April. So that's a good sign as well. If we can get through that, then it's possible that the market has changed sentiment. There's more, a lot more people in the bullish space and that's going to help drive the market up. So for now, 36 is where we're sitting. Above 42 is where I want to see, where I want to see it go from that point. Break above, consolidate and move again. That's what I'm preparing for. Up, down or sideways, your call, but I'm prepared to see what happens next so that I understand what I am doing with my plan. Bitcoin dominance has had a bit of a pullback and the level that I don't want to see it break down from would be 44%. Again, that's the 50% level. There are a couple of swings here, so it lines up really well with other price areas, making it a price cluster. The Bitcoin dominance is something that I look at to give me an idea of the altcoin space as well. Is the money flowing into Bitcoin or is it flowing into altcoins? Currently, it is flowing out of Bitcoin or just not as much going into it and more of it is going into altcoins, primarily Ethereum at the moment. And that is because we're just seeing a whole lot of news. The Ethereum hard fork coming up, EIP1559 is not priced in. That's all the headings that I've been seeing, the headlines that I've been seeing through Twitter and YouTube over the last week or two. With all that said, I still haven't seen Ethereum 
break through its major resistance with all of that news, the biggest stuff, all of the titles of the biggest week in Ethereum coming up, it's managed to go from a low to an intermediate high. Why hasn't it broken out of these areas if it's the biggest week and everyone's supposedly hasn't priced in all of these measures? Well, okay, one, maybe it's not priced in. Maybe people don't think it's that big of a deal. Two, maybe it isn't that big of a deal. So what do we do next? Same old thing. It gets boring. That's the way it should be. $2,200 is my level of support. You can see here we've got some previous highs at around 23, 2350. So on that, we want to see it hold yet again, break through with some volume above 27. And then it's got several levels to break. 27, we got 28, call it 29. And then we have 3000, which is the major 50% from the top to the current major low. So there is a lot of overhead resistance. Fingers crossed that we can consolidate, take some time here and then break through these levels on strong volume. So look for that. They're the, they're the things I'm looking for. Break of the resistance levels, but it has to have good solid volume. And, and we need to see some cons consolidation above those levels. That's it. They're the main things I look for every single time. Now we had an update of Cardano yesterday on the channel, so I won't spend too much time on it. If you want to know more of it, about it, go and check out the Cardano video after this video. And of course, the staking pool is doing very well. If you want to stake your ADA and some passive income while we are waiting for this thing to take off, check out the links down below video on how to do that. So ADA has been pushing higher steadily. Yesterday, I put a post up just looking at the volume on these days as it began to push higher. It just kept looking like it was getting slammed down with sell orders. Big volume, big volume, market slammed down, market slammed down. Hopefully, we are changing tunes here and we're getting a big volume. Market is the highest close it's had during this whole period of down and up. You can see here, that's the close and it's the highest it's been since the 8th of July. That's a good sign and we're breaking through the trend line right here. So ideally 150 is the next target. Let's get above that and we can move forward with the next stages of consolidation. This is literally all this market's about now. It's just testing the highs and the lows and we have to be patient with it. A to BTC has had a few good days up. Good sign dropped into our zone as we talked about 2000 to 3200 is the zone of uh, buy because it's been sliding against Bitcoin value. Looking good. FTT, talked about it on the channel again. Check out that video. It has been doing extremely well. It has burns as we can see from these tweets. So they burn their tokens, meaning less supply. And they have heaps of partnerships and announcements coming up. So we've got all of these partnerships coming together. LCS, League Championship Series. The League of Legends, I have no idea, I'm not a gamer, but obviously more eyeballs on FTX, better for the exchange. You can see I've got more announcements here. This just came out recently, about 24 hours ago. And then the FTT against BTC has also been climbing. So we want to see both of those. The dollar value going up and the BTC value going up. This is good stuff. The main question I ask here is, do you believe these were the lows? If you don't believe they're the lows, then it doesn't matter what the price does here. It doesn't matter if it goes up 50%, 100%. This goes for all of the cryptocurrencies. The only question I ask is, are these the lows? I think possibly, which is the reason why I am dollar cost averaging into FTT. And the same deal for the US dollar chart. Are these the lows? Possibly. We had some big volume pick up and the market hasn't come back to it and now has attempted its first break of the resistance at around $36. We got a nice consolidation above that. That's the next stage to continue back to our all-time high. So that's my reason for these tokens because even if these bounce around and uh, then fall back underneath this level, it hasn't really mattered if I bought the low or I, or I missed it and saw this run up because it's going to come back. I just have to know that this is a low or a major low. I don't want to be buying it on every dip so that I'm not wasting my funds on every dip. Last one I want to look at is Theta because I apply the same uh, theory to that, the same question. Is Theta at its low? Have we seen its, its low here at around 12,000 Satoshis? If we think we have, then this is probably not a bad level to, to start to dollar cost average into Theta. It is at 50% of its range 
hitting resistance. It's at the major 50% of its range again, hitting resistance. A break above that would be fantastic and a consolidation. That's kind of like a buy area there for, for theta if we can get above those levels. Dollar chart for theta is also looking okay. It dropped into our $2 to $5 zone and now has bounced above it. And it looks like it is really, really trying to slow the bleed down. You can see that the trend lines are getting longer and longer. So we're not getting these fast drops down, but it is slowly bleeding down, but that's a good sign. We're starting to get, hopefully, a rounded out base where the selling pressure is becoming less and the buying pressure is becoming more. We can start to see that now as the market has moved up more than any period for about a month and a half. So that's a good start. And now we're going sideways to try and test this downtrend. So that's what I got for you guys today. Update of the critical levels and where I'm looking for the market to find some support and then test the next move up. It is one of those periods where it's up, down or sideways. But if we can be prepared to understand what the market is showing us, then it's going to help us out with our investing. And of course, when it gets to those levels, then it's kind of like a trigger to say, all right, now might be a safer time to start dollar cost averaging in rather than buying on every single dip. We got to, I like to wait for a dip that looks like it could be the last or one of the last. I don't want to be buying everything because what's the point? I might as well wait for an actual confirmation that the market has shown me a low so that I can start to deploy some capital. Make sure you've liked the video, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, heaps more coming up. Stake your Cardano with the Investor Accelerator pool that is down below. I'll see you on Instagram or Twitter. Or if you want to join the Investor Accelerator Lite membership, there's still a special going on. Check the link out down below. And for the Aussies that want to be buying cryptocurrency with their superannuation, check out the link down below for New Brighton Capital, $150 free credit when you use the referral code Pazino. So that's to set your superannuation up into an SMSF, a self-managed super fund. These guys will help you out. The accountants that specialize in buying crypto, metals, and property with your super money. So check out the link down below and give them a call. 20 minutes free consultation there. Question for you guys. Do you think the lows we just saw in July are the market lows. We will never see those prices again. Let me know in the comments down below. Is that the final low or do we have further to go? I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.